plane is manned by the luckiest crew of the luckiest squadron of the Air Force. Their waste gunner is Trigger Joe. With him at his post, they can fly anywhere with complete confidence. For a gun sight, he uses a crystal ball. He fires by instinct. Never mind that crystal ball trigger. He didn't have one. He didn't need one. There's science in that kind of shooting. Take a look at it. A fighter has fixed guns, all facing forward. To aim his guns, he must aim his plane. He's like a flying gun. In any type of attack, the fighter must aim at the spot where you will be by the time his bullets get there. In order to continue to fire at you, he must fly a pursuit curve. This is the time he is really dangerous to you. This is the time he is easiest to hit. There are five parts to a fighter's attack. Overtaking. Turn in. Roll through. Guns bearing. and break away. This is the pursuit curve. Now he is your target. To you, he will always appear head on. Not this, not this, but this, and this, and this. He's in his curve, head on, in range, shoot, shoot. know why you missed? You didn't allow for the forward motion of the bomber being imparted to the bullet. Oh, yeah. Uh, what was that? Remember when you were a paper boy? If you tossed the paper directly towards the porch, you went sailing by and lit next door? The same thing happens when you shoot from a moving plane. If you fire point blank at 90 degrees, the bullet continues to move in the direction you're going and will go off here. Before you fire, the bullet is moving with you on your line of flight. When you fire, the explosion sends it in a new direction. Upon leaving the muzzle, the bullet immediately turns and follows a direct path between them. The paper boy never understood why, but he soon learned he had to aim at this side of the house for his paper to land on the porch. To hit this plane on the ground, then, we must do the same thing. Make allowance for the effect our bomber's motion will have on the bullet. We must make this allowance no matter where we shoot from. Here, here, or here. This deflection is always between the target and the tail of our bomber. At only one point are we a target for him. At that time, our point of aim is here. If we shoot accurately, we get this. Now, if he is moving toward us, our point of aim must be such that our bullets will intercept him. But what happens if we put him in the air, where he is free to change his course and keep firing at us? As we move forward, he must change the angle of his approach. This is his pursuit curve. We apply the same principle of deflection we had for the moving plane on the runway. As long as he stays in his curve, we know where he will be and can intercept him. Uh, paper boy, deflection over here on a bicycle. Yeah. Just remember, the deflection is always between the target and the tail of your bomber. But you have to make a I've got it. I've got it. Now watch this. Between the Joker and my own tail. Let's see. About here. Hey! What the hell, Doc? You're starting to get it. 
Stoughton? Brother, I got it! Your direction was right, but you had no correction of your deflection as the approach angle changed. Uh, for instance. We've seen that this amount of deflection is right for a plane straight out at 90 degrees to your fore and aft axis. And when he's dead on your tail, you can shoot straight at him. So at any other angle, the deflection must be somewhere between these two. Uh, Doc, nothing personal, but that don't look like nothing I ever seen in the air. Of course not. You're not conscious of the forward movement of either your bomber or the fighter. All you see is his movement in relation to your position in the air. He appears to slide towards your tail. I ain't seen nothing like that either. How about this? That I've seen. All right. This is just a bird's eye view of that attack. Here's the way you see it. Oh, yeah. Here's the amount of deflection for 90 degrees. Here's the 90 degree position as you see it. Now here's how you aim. Using the 35 mil radius of your gun sight as a measuring stick, the proper deflection is three rads, or three times the radius of the gun sight. One, two, three. There. That's where you aim for 90 degrees. Uh, how do you figure that? Oh, you want it established mathematically. Very well. 1,000 times the quantity 1 over V sub 0 minus V sub T sine 90 degrees over 2 V sub 0 squared times V sub G sine 90 degrees minus 1,000 times V sub T sine alpha over V sub 0 times the quantity 1 plus A rho D sub rho V sub 0 equals 100 mils equals 3 rads. So it's three rads at 90 degrees. What next? 90 degrees was straight out from your beam. Halfway back from there to your tail at 45 degrees, the deflection is two rads. One, two. Any questions? No. Half the remaining distance at 22 and a half degrees, it is one rad. And half again at 11 and a quarter degrees, it is only one half rad. Out here, it's three. Halfway back, it's two. Half again is one. And half again, one half. If you're flying a straight course and traveling at a true airspeed of 225, that's all you have to remember. Approach angle, amount of deflection for that angle. Now. When you're in the air, 90 degrees can be up, down, side, all the way around. It becomes a wheel. No matter where he is on that wheel, always allow a three-rad deflection toward the tail of your plane. If he is coming in at 45 degrees above, below, front, or back, the wheel becomes a cone with your fore and aft axis running through the middle. Uh, Doc. That don't look, look like, like nothing, nothing I've ever seen, seen in the air. air. I know, I know. In the air, all you see is straight out for 90 degrees. Then halfway back, about here for you, the two rad position. It's easy to find. Just remember, it's a complete circle all around your plane. Halfway again, at the one rad position, the cone becomes smaller and continues to diminish with the angle of the approach. Frontal attacks are exactly the same even though they may not at first appear to be sliding towards your tail. But if you aim here, see what your forward motion does to your bullet. Change your aim in a direct line towards your tail. And there's one less fighter to worry about. If it's a direct head-on attack, your forward motion does not affect the direction of the bullet. So you fire point blank as you do from the tail. When the angle is 11 and 1 quarter degrees, Give it the same one-half rad deflection toward your tail. At 22 and a half degrees, one rad. At 45 degrees, two rads. And at 90 degrees, three rads. Okay, I got it. Give me a plane. Give me a plane. Here's a high side attack. 90 degrees straight out. This is the position of your bomber. Where would you aim? Hmm. Uh, 90 degrees, 
three reds towards my tail. One, two, three. There you are. Well, three reds is right. But you'd have to have a weird looking tail for that direction to be in line. Take a line from the target to the tail that was built on the plane and put your sight on it. There. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. No fighter is going to sit still like that for you. It is constantly sliding towards your tail. So you have to keep changing your amount of deflection to have the right aim at the key positions. From the nose to the beam, it is increasing. And from the beam to the tail, it decreases. Here's one last tip. As soon as he gets in range, fire a two-second burst. Check your angle and fire another two seconds. Remember these three points. Shoot only when he is attacking you and in range. Aim between the target and the tail of your bomber. Estimate the approach angle and apply the correct deflection. Now that's the story. Think you can do it? Sight me. Give me a plane. Ready? Here he comes. Well? Eh, uh, goes kind of fast, don't it? Only a few seconds for the whole attack. How's for a chance to practice on a few, uh, the uh, slower ones? Okay, if you're sure you've got it straight. Oh, I got it. I can talk it good. Let's hear you. Here's a plane. Well, first I figure is he an enemy plane. In this case, he is. Next, is he attacking? Not yet, but he looks suspicious. Yep, now he's turning in. I line him up and just wait for him to get in range. There he is, heading right for me. Hold it, hold it, hold it! Eh, I've got a lot of figuring to do with this spot. Now, I'm going this way. He's coming this way. It's about 90 degrees. It's three of these red things. On a line to my tail, and he's in range. Eh, I guess I can shoot. Okay, let him come. Hold it, hold it. That's two seconds. Yeah, now he's back here. Looks like about a red and a half. Maybe a little more. There. Start him again. How'd I do? Didn't miss a thing. How about taking one full speed? Okay, why not? First I gotta identify him. He's enemy, all right. Looks like the same guy. Yeah, maybe I'll get him this time. Now he's coming in, gotta line him up, check the range, estimate approach angle, towards my tail, 90 degrees again, three rads over here, down here, statue. Not too much, two seconds, check about a rad and a half, so he's gonna get the reason. Look, Trigger, look at the plane. It works. Well, I'll be a sad sack of... <laughs>